All right, to start today, I have long believed the job of journalism was to separate the important from the merely interesting. And isn't that a task right now, given the wild economic swings on top of our hyper-politicized atmosphere? And that's why I'm thrilled to have Justin Wolfers with me to start today. He's a professor of public policy and economics at the University of Michigan. And when I see his name pop up on a, a news or business channel or on a podcast, I lean in. So, Justin, great to have you here. And I want to start with kind of what I feel is your specialty, which is separating the difference between the headlines with what is actually happening. Uh, it was a bleak week to, in the minds of of many. So is the sky falling or just sort of drooping a bit? Well, I also like to sometimes imagine the glass is half full. So let's start with the half full side, okay. which is that unemployment is at 3.6%, which is it's nearly at a 50 year low. Um, people are quitting jobs, finding new jobs, finding better jobs and finding opportunities. People are starting businesses pretty much at record rates. So the state of the economy, if you think about it in terms of your ability to get a job, and for some people even to get a raise, is pretty good. The glass half empty is when an economy overheats and when the world gets complicated. And right now we're in a very complicated world with Putin invading Ukraine and the rest of the hangover from the COVID pandemic. Where that's shown up most, Thankfully, it hasn't shown up in jobs, but where it has shown up is in prices. Um, and of course, we're all aware of prices at the pump have gone up a heck of a lot since yeah. Putin invaded Ukraine. A range of other prices have gone up as well. And so some people are finding it a little harder to make ends meet right now. Uh, you just pointed out, though, yes, you would feel like the real calling card here is that low unemployment rate. But I read that going back to the 1950s, if you have inflation at over 4 percent and unemployment at under 5 percent, every time that ends up adding up to a recession uh, sometime in the next two years after that occurrence. Is that the case coming or are we in a laboratory that we really don't understand? I heard you remark recently that there is no living economist right now who has lived through a a worldwide pandemic. I think that's really important to bear in mind. Look, each of us psychologically wants to leave the pandemic behind us. And, and for our mental health, that might be the right thing. But for our economic managers, it's not. And the point is that the rules of a pandemic economy are fundamentally different than that of any other economy. So the patterns that have prevailed in the past may not prevail again right now. And as much as many of us are trying to get back to our regular lives, we realize, first of all, that life is still very complicated in much of the rest of the world. Um, China is opening and closing every second day, it seems, yeah, because yeah. they're still aiming for COVID zero. Um, and realize that businesses that shut down less than a year ago, many of them are struggling to reopen the new rhythm of work and the new rhythm of life, where, uh, first of all, we bought a lot of goods when we couldn't consume services during the pandemic. Now life's getting normal. We're trying to consume a lot of services, but not many goods. This is a wrenching change in the, the, the economy of a nature which I've never seen before in my life. And so naturally there are going to be bumps along the road. I think any of us could have predicted there'd be some bumps very few of us predicted what those bumps would be. And it turns out the big bump right now is inflation. Are you comfortable with uh, all of the talk? Uh, I, in fact, it almost feels like um, uh, uh, some people believe a, a recession is a foregone conclusion. What I hate is that for some, uh, that is politically advantageous to have that happen, which I think is a horrible uh, calculus that we live in right now. Uh, but do you feel like a recession is necessarily on the horizon? No. The word recession is dramatically overused out there. In economics, it has a very precise meaning. It means that the economy is slowing. It's going backwards, right. Uh, right. that we're producing less, that people get fewer jobs, that uh, people are spending less. None of those things are true. Uh, what is true is inflation is uncomfortably high. That makes people cranky. And so then they use the first economic swear word, if you like, uh, recession that they can think of. Look, the reality is if the economy were going into a recession, we'd see a whole lot of early warning indicators going off and none of them are going off right now. We're producing jobs at a rate that in normal times we would call a boom rather than the bust. So I'm not promising any of your viewers that we won't have a recession, but I am willing to tell you that uh, the state of the economy right now in terms of getting people into jobs, getting people spending, getting factories back to work, 
all of that's looking pretty good right now. Well, we, we definitely need to have people who do have their hands on the few levers that are available. We need to have confidence in them. And let me start with the Federal Reserve. They seem to have completely uh, miscalculated just how deep inflation was going to be. Uh, Lawrence Summers was urging them a long, long time ago to be moving interest rates up much more quickly than they have. They're already promising uh, basically another big jump coming up later this summer. Do you have faith in the Fed? I do. Look, we all have to adjust our expectations. We had a dramatic financial crisis all the way back in 2008 that reshaped the economy of the 2010s, followed by the largest downturn of our lifetime. And the Fed, as a result, had to take extraordinary measures through the last 10 or even 15 years. We've had interest rates close to zero through that entire time. And the thing we've all got to remember is that ain't normal. Yeah. That was the Fed trying to bail us out of an incredibly difficult and awkward situation. What they're trying to do now is bring us back to normal. Normal is that the, the interest rate on your mortgage is actually positive and you have to pay a bit each month. It's going to be painful for people who just bought houses or want to buy houses. But realize this is something we should all have seen coming, that at some point, uh, interest rates have to get back to normal, and normal is maybe 3 4%. Uh, I mentioned our politically charged world. A lot of people want to believe that the executive branch, and in particular the White House, has access to levers. Is there anything that President Biden should be doing, or is there very little that he can do but watch? Well, the important levers that the White House has and had were in managing the pandemic and uh, both minimizing the impact of the disease, and I, I think at best we'd say partly successful, and then at minimizing the economic impact given that we had the disease, and there they were dramatically successful. That's why we have an unemployment rate of 3.6% right now, which two years ago, if you remember the dark days, Many of us thought unimaginable. Now, that has come with a bit of a hangover. The hangover is inflation. Inflation is something that's best uh, dealt with by the Fed, um, trying to create a more sustainable rate of uh, economic growth that will translate to less price growth. There are a few things at the margin that the administration could be doing, but they're really relatively small. I'd like them to pay a little bit more attention to tariffs. Um, I just installed solar panels. Why we're paying tariffs on solar panels, for instance, is crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. Many of the elements of Trump's uh, trade war with China were never dismantled. And if we dismantle some of those, that will help reduce prices. But overall, this is a job for the Fed. Well, lastly, just I want to ask you about this, the political uh, environment that I mentioned earlier, where you've got some people it might actually work out in their favor if we were to fall, fall further behind or into a recession. And we have what uh, some people have pointed out as a real disconnect. There was a poll uh, just as everyone arrived for the Mackinac Policy Conference this year. Everybody, uh, their number one issue was the economy and inflation. But when you drill down, you found out that more than 70 percent of the response said that their lives financially were either the same or better. We really are falling prey to uh, what we're reading and hearing on television and radio, right? This is what one of my friends calls the I'm OK economy, which is you ask people about the state of the economy and they tell you it's dreadful and you hear them use words like recession a lot. You ask them about their family and say, well, my family's doing OK. <laughs> and actually, you look at what people are doing. If we were really, people really thought we we're on the cusp of a recession, they'd be cutting back spending dramatically. Well, that's not true. They're spending like crazy. If they thought we we're on the cusp of recession, they wouldn't be starting new businesses. That's not true. The reality is Americans are acting as if they're incredibly optimistic about the economy, even as they moan to the rest of us <laughs> that they're pessimistic. I'm going to choose to believe the optimism for now. Let's let's do that. Justin, good to sit in on your classroom today. I really appreciate you being on Flashpoint. Thanks so much. You're welcome in class any day, mate. Yeah, thanks very much, Justin Wolfers, the economist from the University of Michigan. We'll bring in the roundtable right after this. This is Flashpoint on Local 4.